tonight, so watch out, Paul. Also, Emily, Jessica and Paul have been in touch, a different Paul. Uh, seen some really spooky stuff in the Great Hall. We first saw someone sitting at the table, then uh, white and even black orbs, and finally a dark figure coming out of the doorway and back in. And once again, a message from them about Jake. That's a theme over the last few days. A lot of you talking about that on the text and the website this, uh, this evening. Now, let's go to webcam two, the cellar where the team were earlier. Very popular webcam tonight, this one. Uh, an arm came out of the pillar in the cellar, says Paul from Cardiff. Thank you very much for that. Amy and Becker from Bolton. There's a young girl hiding behind the crates. Uh, she looks to be very evil. And I can see a small boy crying and a man covered in white shrouds standing behind him. Now, webcam three. This is where, of course, Keth, Kath, shall I say, has been lying in the bed early. You can see the team now and uh, Billy there. Um, let's see what people are saying. As Kath is in the bed, Donna from London, the outline of a male figure by the bedroom door. Uh, Nula from Antrim, orbs flying around Kath. And Jake in London, I've seen two figures in the bedroom, a male in a dark cloak and another dressed in white. Thank you for those messages on webcam three, where you can see the team at the moment. Now, let's go to webcam four. You've just seen Yvette and Carl in the, the well, and there you can see all the ropes and so on. Um, Deborah from Somerset. I can see human remains, including a skull at the bottom of the well on the webcam. And Billy and Gary from Preston, I can see a white lady uh, uh, on that webcam as well, and several orbs as well. Webcam 4, very popular tonight. Thank you for all your messages on that. Now, our competition, uh, which we're running on Most Haunted Live all this weekend and until the end of next week, is great. You'll be heading off if you're the winner. A pair of tickets to see a top show in London, The Woman in Black, and then two nights, bed, breakfast and dinner at the Radisson Hotel. Also, we're throwing in priority tickets for the next UK Most Haunted Live event, so we look forward to seeing you. And Series 10 of Most Haunted, which is uh, now out. And runners up walking off with the priority tickets as well, and also you walk off with the DVD. You must be over 18 to enter, and it's for UK residents only, by the way, the competition. So if you'd like to win, this is how it works. You answer this question. The first Most Haunted Live from abroad, Most Haunted Live Transylvania, was based in which European country? Was it uh, A, Germany, B, Romania, or C, Spain? You can enter by visiting MostHauntedLive.net. And once Most Haunted Live ends tomorrow night, you can still enter for another whole week at livingtv.co.uk slash competition. Now, the competition actually closes at midnight on the 23rd of January, and we'll remember uh, to get in touch with you, of course, and let you know if you're a winner. And if you want to know who the winners are, contact Virgin Media. So good luck with that, and we'll see you. Finally, some messages uh, to leave you with for the moment from Interactive. Paul in Leeds says, a word of warning. The demon which has been following the team around will be very dangerous. Do not leave a vet on her own and always make sure she is well protected. Uh, uh, thus Fred's uh, bracelet we were talking about earlier. Paul in Leeds, thank you for your message. And Gemma from Bidston says, I live in Bidston Village. I've heard many ghost stories about the hall. It's a fascinating place, she says. Definitely something eerie about it. Every time you look at the hall, um, it gives her a strange, eerie feeling. Gemma, thank you for your message from Bidston. Good to hear from you. Uh, more from Interactive a bit later on. Paul, back to you. Thank you, Julian. Well, a lot of information emerging, a lot going on. The camera is now being brought up from the well. Leslie Smith and Fred Batter still with us, of course. We've had Charles Stanley, then Ferdinand, possibly strange, also a William Stanley, Leslie. Yes, William Stanley is, in fact, Ferdinando's brother, who took over after his sudden death um, and was then the Earl of Derby, the sixth Earl of Derby. And, in fact, you know, Billy said there's a creative aspect to this man, and there is. Um, he was very well-travelled um, at the time, extremely wealthy, and had his own uh, players if you like and he was uh, his marriage was witnessed by Elizabeth the first he had his own actors and once unfortunately for him for history to record he saw William Shakespeare saw his plays and decided and said to the world that he felt he was not all he was cracked up to be which is rather unfortunate to be remembered for that um, but no he's a man who was a bit frustrated as well that his work wasn't very widely accepted and some think he wrote the work of Shakespeare yet another one of these red herrings okay thank you for that Leslie Fred Brian was mentioning that going below ground level going down was regarded as a way of actually getting in touch with demons? Well, it's regarded as it could be a portal, um, which can be anything, really, a cupboard, a well, a chest of drawers, or a portal that's been created by a witch. And the ones that communicate with them guard that portal, because the good witches, as soon as they find them, close them up. So that's another good thing we found out tonight about Jake. Leslie was talking to a member of the audience, which is something I thought anyway. There's a local term for the devil, which is old Jake. So we are dealing with something like a demon here. 
So that's really confirmed something. Now this investigation me. is called the search for evil. Do you think it's possible, with your knowledge of demonology, that evil could pursue the team from place to place? I think it already is, yeah. I think it's been doing it all week. And, that, and that's, um, we'll come to a climax either this evening or tomorrow where we'll, something will happen. So was it wise then, do you think, to place Kath once again on her own in, the, own in that room? The thinking was that that spirit, presence, whatever, had an attraction for Kath. That may be an unhealthy attraction. I could be wrong, but I think it's got the attraction for a vet. That's why I've given her some protection tonight. Because we did see last night during the Ouija ball session that the, the glass kept seeking out Yvette, kept moving exactly, towards Yvette. Exactly, and I think that's what the problem is. So Yvette needs to be careful. Although she's got protection tonight, I'm sure it's following her around more than the others. Thank you very much, Fred, back okay. for the moment. And Leslie Smith, we're going to go straight back to the vigil after this very short break. This is Most Haunted Live, the penultimate night of a fascinating investigation. The search for evil continues after this. Welcome back to Most Haunted Live. The search for evil continues, although we are now worried that evil may be seeking out Yvette and the team. We have learnt that Jake, a name that's been haunting the team for about four nights now, is local slang in the northwest, parts of the northwest, for the devil. With that in mind, let's get straight back to Yvette Fielding and the team, where I think they may be in the middle of a Ouija board session. Yvette, did you hear that? Jake is local slang for the devil himself. I know, I know. Are you hearing that, Paul? Can you hear it? We can, I think. We're going to check the tape yeah. from the break as well, but we can, I can hear that very clearly. Yes, we're all standing completely still. Yeah, OK. Just... That was... It seems to be coming from right underneath uh, my right foot underneath my right foot around that area can you feel that on your left foot we're also hearing whining noises coming from a room over there i had to say like i've been stabbed in the chest are you all right yeah claire our audience member claire oh where are you moved oh blimey are you all right thank you are you hearing the tapping noise very loudly yeah. what do you think to it i think it's it's really interesting I've okay. never heard anything like that. And you can see our feet, no one's yep. moving around. Absolutely. OK, now you picked something up. But you say you're not psychic, but you said something earlier, didn't you? We were downstairs. I was downstairs with Bill, um, Billy and Chris, and we were just chatting, making introductions. And I just, for about ten minutes, just kept thinking about a woman in my head, kneeling down, sobbing with this bloody bundle of rags with a dead baby in it. And it's okay. it just this horrible image, image that, that just, just kept saw. flashing up in well, my head. I see, maybe Leslie or uh, Fred can, can... Maybe they might have some information on that. Well, you're telling that I heard a breath here and the bangs have been going bang, 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 bang. Going, going on. Did you see it? I just went to... Have you just called Yvette? No. Right. OK. Kieran, <coughs> when Kath was on the bed, she kept feeling uh, something on her hair and on her hands. Yes. You've got an EMF meter going off there at the top of the bed where Kath was feeling energy. Yeah, I had an EMF meter recording while Kath was in the yeah. bed, uh -huh. and it went from uh, 2 milligauss to 18 and then to 225 milligauss. So I've got a magnetic field meter now at the head of the bed. On your command, I can turn up the sound, but I don't want to interfere if we're hearing genuine whining. That's the only problem. Just play it now, quickly, the high-pitched sound. That's, what's con that's the constant sound of the high EMF. Oh. High magnetic field, that is. OK, so that would have affected Kath's hair, or she could have had the feeling of being touched on the head. That could have possibly affected her, yeah. OK, all right, let's continue with this. This. Let's find out what's tapping here. Something's desperately trying to get hold of our, our attention. Just, uh, I heard you when you were talking to... I didn't want to interrupt your conversation with Kieran, but I just heard your name again. But it's, it's getting louder, it's getting more okay. obvious. Say something. my name again, then. I was too scared to, to touch the glass. What's that? What's that? What is that? It's like a radio. Not talk, but, but like a... <gasps> OK. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't... I can't... I can't pinpoint where it's coming from. Let's put our fingers on the glass. I'm almost too... Um, 
Right. 